Welcome to Overtime on Inferno, your weekly roundup of all the big stories in CSGO. Quicker than we're in different places than normal. Yeah, um, this is a <laughs> stuff setup week. Um, please make sure to rate and review us before the end of the episode. Really help us. I'm Logan. This is AZ Ask. Let's let's explain a little bit. <laughs> So you're yeah. in Cologne. I am in Cologne. We're in the apartment that you might see people walking in and around. Hopefully you don't hear them too much, but yeah, it'll be fine. I mean, to be fair, they're all TLDR staff. Yeah, yeah. The, the TLDR headquarters. No, there's, there's naps who people might know. Everyone else. Complete randoms. I don't, I don't even know some of these people. <laughs> uh, and I am currently on vacation slash at... For a, for a friend's birthday um, back to Buffalo where I went to college. And I say went to college as if I didn't just graduate like a month ago, which is yeah. also... Yeah, like when, when I say went to uni, I'm talking like six whatever. years ago. Yeah, I'm talking about like six weeks ago. Yeah. We won't talk about that. About that. Uh, <laughs> so uh, today we are here for one 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 task. Uh, we're talking about what, Cologne. What would that be? I it, can't it's Cologne. important that's happening. Is Cologna. Yeah. Um the cathedral and everything. Yeah. Um so so let's talk about let's talk about group stage, because we talked about the the plan round that happened. We talked about that. Uh let's talk about group stage. Group stage was kind of a banger. Um let's start with the fact that there's only two of the top ten teams in the playoffs. Yeah, I mean at least it's the two that you'd expect, right? Yeah. If someone said there's only two teams for the top ten, but like I hope it's Navi and FaZe. Because we're, we're currently on, because they're on opposite sides of the bracket as well, because they're both on their group. We're currently on for a rematch of the major final, best of five in the Lanxess arena. It's going to be a banger. Whoa. I pressed a button on the mouse by accident. That's amazing. He's, he's got, got this mouse that's got a million buttons on it, man. Why does he, <laughs> why does he have this? I don't know. That's amazing. It's not my computer. <laughs> um, <laughs> what is it like? <laughs> Don't, don't get I don't know. To keep talking okay. about so, so let's talk about group a group a had navi mouse sports nip heroic g2 movistar riders and, and vitality so this was the this was the stacked group this was the group that mouse should come in absolute last place in it should be mouse out it should probably be movistar riders or vitality outright you expect navis to get into the finals you expect uh into players you expect nip to get into playoffs ants to get into playoffs g2 to somehow get into playoffs Playoffs. heroic to make a to make a good no none of them Matt mouse made it through no matter what you expect of g2 they <laughs> always disappoint i expect no matter nothing. what you expect like expect our, our expectations were much lower for this event like all right just get to playoffs you don't have to win you lose in the quarters like that's all we expect they didn't even fucking do that terrible no. like a terrible performance for g2 it's like, horrible they, and I mean, there's obviously, we might get into this a little bit later. There's a report that supposedly they're thinking of changing Electric B. I don't, Carlos immediately just said no on Twitter, but then. That's also Carlos, so. Yeah, his his word is worth, isn't worth the paper it's written on, or in this case, the cloud space it's written on. <laughs> yeah, so I don't know about that. Um, this group was just weird. So Mao's obviously lost their first match against Navi. And then beat yep. everyone else to get to the lower finals and win the lower finals against Nip. Yeah, and they, they look decent. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Teams that didn't look good, heroic, did not win a map. Yeah, they're a new roster. Like you give them a little bit of time, it's fine. Like yeah, but they didn't. You know, win a they map. had like a week's practice. Eh, fine. Like it, it, heroic have quite a specific way of playing the game as well that I think you have to get used to. Um, and I think we, we saw that when Refresh and Shush first came in. They didn't immediately click. I um, mean, Refresh's case, you never really seemed to get it. Um, so I think it will take a little bit of time for them to get used to it. I'm not particularly worried about Heroic just yet. They do this yeah. again, like after the player break. Maybe we, maybe we have a conversation, but I don't think yeah. they will. Quick conversation about NIP. Uh, I still have problems with this team. I think all of us still do. <laughs> <laughs> they every- don't. Every time I cave and go, you know what? No, I, I was wrong. They, they're actually not NIP. They're actually good. Like They're actually not just a wolf in sheep's clothing. They are, uh, they are a wolf. This not good. And then they immediately just fucking rip the clothes off and become a sheep again. 
It's infuriating. It seems infuriating. Yeah, I, I, I have said this many times on the podcast. I will say it again. This team does not have a real offer, and they don't have someone who is consistently a star that's not named Hampus, who's also <laughs> their in-game leader. Yeah, which they need s- something. It, unfortunately, they, they have Roland. Like he, he should be the second star, and he's still, I think, acclimatizing to to NIP. Like he, he's still somewhat new there. Like we'll wait till after the player break. I think. Um, I don't know if they're going to make changes. I haven't heard anything. Um, I don't suppose they will. I don't think they should. Uh, yeah. I think they should just stick with this and see what they can do because this roster has the ability to do damage. We've seen that. Like we've seen how good Hampus actually is. And it's every time it's surprising. The problem with this roster is it feels so similar to the last roster, like before they had device, like yeah. the, the pre-device times, where they were always one of those teams that's like, you know, maybe they could win something. Maybe they could do some damage here. And then they would never do damage. And then right when you lost all faith in them, you had nothing. We, we talked about this in like very first episode of the podcast. Right when you lose all faith, they go and win an event. Yeah. Like, wow, now I've got faith again. And then they go off and are the worst oh, team in the world. I just clicked. They do need to make a change because Plopsky is fucking terrible. I actually think Plopsky might be the worst player on a top 20 team. Uh, maybe Deaths. Deaths is pretty bad. Plopsky is just like, he just, he does, he adds absolutely nothing. Like, I, I don't understand what Plopsky is supposed to bring. He, 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 can't like he never seems to trade properly he never seems to win a clean gunfight he isn't a particularly good clutcher he doesn't open up rounds like it, i know it's kind of easy pickings to pick on the lowest fragger but i i think he is genuinely just not mechanically good enough to play at this level hmm. um I, I i've held that opinion for a while and now i just think it's, it's so obvious like there are so many rounds they lose because he just doesn't get a kill that he should even when he plays a situation well, his hands just let him down. It's it's, it's kind of annoying that to watch him play because it's like you're so close to being good, but you just don't have the hands to be a top tier player. Yeah. Um, other teams that didn't make it through G two. Um, I G two team dude. It, there's I, so I, much I, firepower and just so little fucking idea what they're doing. I, I've been I've had this opinion for a while. I don't know if I've said it on the podcast, but I've had like this as an opinion. Um, I gotta turn do not disturb on Discord. Uh, I've had this opinion for a little while, which is that G two is held back by the Hunter and Nico duo. I think is the, my my biggest problem. Right, is that you need to be tied to Nico's uh, innate hubris, like that. Yeah. All Nico teams seem to have the same problem, and I just don't think it can be. I don't think you can avoid the idea that it's him. Yeah. So my my problem here right, is if you go and you go, I'm going to make roster moves. Okay. So let's go through the team. Nico, no, you can't touch him. Hunter, well, Nico's there. You can't touch Hunter. They okay. also just gave them both two new contracts, like for yeah. a fuck ton of years. Uh, Monesi, uh, no, you don't want to replace him. Absolutely, no, no shot. Jax, I mean, I guess you could, but he's the support player. He's the only person that's allowing Nico and yeah. Hunter. You, you can and, replace Jax, but I don't think it makes any difference. Yeah, it, do, it doesn't make a difference. You're It's six to one, right? Alexi B, well, you just traded your IGL yeah. away yeah. to get a better IGL. Yeah, I've been talking and writing about this the last few days. Like G2 have dug themselves into a hole where... They've given three, like they've made three big, so, so they, the two contracts for Hunter and Nico for a fuck ton of years, as they put it, plus Monacy's buyout means those three are essentially untouchable. So when this roster doesn't work, the only person you can blame is Alexi B. Regardless of whether or not that's true, he's the only person they can possibly blame because yeah. everyone else, you can't cut. I mean, you can cut Jax, but I don't think it matters. I mean, they could. Jax, Jax is still one of the best players in the world at doing his at doing the job that they are asking him to do, which is get the star players into the position for a star player. I think so. I think Jax is an excellent site anchor. There's a there's some yeah uh, dissenting opinion around where people think Jax isn't good. I, I right. think he's pretty good. I mean, he's a little bit held back, maybe by his by his brain because his hands are fucking money. Like he he doesn't miss. He has. He has like star player aim, 
with a with a support player mentality. Whether or not he has the support player brain, I'm not a hundred percent sure. I'd probably have to watch his uh, demos like more consistently to know whether or not he's doing anything wrong. But to my untrained eye, it doesn't seem like Jack is the issue with this team. I don't know what the issue is. That's the problem. It's like really hard to diagnose the issues with this team because on paper, these players are excellent. And even when you watch them, like you watch Monacy, you don't think, oh, no, this guy's like not doing what he should. You watch Hunter. Hunter is fucking ridiculous, dude. Yeah. Hunter is like a top, I want to say top five player in the world. I think Hunter is being somewhat underrated by the fact that people compare him to Nico. He is... He's the second best mid rounder in the world behind Rops. It's him and Rops. Like, up there. If you're in a 3v3 or a 3v4, there is no player you want alive more than Rops or Hunter. Like, he, he consistently, consistently will find kills, untradeable kills in 3v3s, 4v4s, just from nothing. Like, he'll just be, the, the camera will just cut to him. He'll be shooting somebody in the side of the head, completely take no damage. He'll shoot them. He'll get a free kill and then he'll get out and the G2 just have the advantage. I don't know how he does it every round, every time. And, Magic. and they still lose. <laughs> I don't understand. I I don't have a good answer, which I think is I think is the most like the biggest problem is that no one has a good answer. Yeah. There's, I, there's, there's no good answer to the G2 conundrum. Next team on the list is Ents. Um, yeah. Honestly, I think they just had an off event. Like they they, they, they fell a bit burnt out. They've played. They were like rode a high for a little bit when other teams are struggling. I think their level is probably like sixth or seventh in the world. And they've yeah, got, they had like a couple of high points and now they're just a little bit of a low point, but they're just going like this, but the equilibrium is probably like sixth in the world. I also think that Ents is one of those teams that's really, really good right now, but they were not expecting to be really, really good. So they've been playing a lot of like the, um, at Valorant, we call them Mickey Mouse tournaments. Yeah, yeah. The it's like, not- this the smaller tournaments that don't really matter that much. I think yep. they're a little burnt out. I think they need the player yeah. break. I think this is just Cologne's at the end of the season. It's hidden them now. Yeah, like, I agree. Uh, no, I'm not, it. I'm not ready to make over exaggerations about my, uh, NC yet. So yeah, um, I, I completely agree that this is, this is slightly below their level. They were playing slightly above their level. They're a good team that isn't quite elite tier, which is pretty much what we've been saying anyway. Like, so our next team's a little bit complicated because there's two parts to this team so vitality was terrible this event zywu was godly this event yeah the the with vitality have spent like two and a half years to get back to exactly where they were when they started where zywu yeah. trying to drag some corpses over the line but like that's he used to be is. able to actually do that i, I mean that, that's that's all this is right now. It's just this. It this event was the Zaiwu show. They went out in lower semis, but like yeah, well, this we, was the we, show. I think we spoke a little bit about this, and I do think Apex will be the first one to go. That's what I think. I don't know. Like that's not based on rumors or anything. anything that's heard. just that's just it feels it's vibes. Like, like, Sonic was training Majestic to be the IGL of like Astralis when Glaive was out. I. I it just makes sense to me that there's no good IGLs available. If there was, G2 would probably buy them. Um, so you just maybe, go, Majisk, IGL, they, we'll find another player. Like Maybe Vitality know. grabs Alexi B. Yeah, may, uh, yeah actually, maybe. <laughs> I, I, I'd like to see it. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, there's not much to say about Vitality because they still have these inherent problems that we've been talking about for a while. Yep. Um, it's not like they magically changed and went away. No, it's not new. Um, quickly speaking of magically teams that have fixed all their problems, Mouse Sports. Yeah, um, so we've, <laughs> oh, certainly I have been quite critical of Dexter because this team should should have like at least high points. Like it should be an upset team if nothing else. And it hasn't been that. It's been a team that's mm-hmm. been getting upset. Um, so I think it's only fair for me to say like fair fucks to Dexter because you know, if I'm going to give him stick when his team doesn't do well, it's only right I should go. You know what? Well done. Good shit. Like, yeah, like this team isn't fixed by any stretch of the imagination. No, it's still a young team. The players are still getting better. They're still getting there, and you've got them to the like 
You've got them further in IEM Cologne than any other mouse sports roster has ever been. The the interesting thing about it is you look through the games, right, and you look who was the who was the best player on the team, right? In their loss against Navi, it was Bemis. In their win against Heroic, it was JDC. Lower semis against Vitality, it was Frozen. Lower finals against Nip, it was Frozen again. But like Torzi was right behind. It's a different person every game. Yeah. It's then, not the Vitality syndrome of Zai was dragging you through this. It is this is win by committee. The team looks like it should be like a like what I like to call a toolbox team, where you yeah. have different tools for different situations. Like in in some games, you need, just need Torzi to take over. In some games, it's all about like that aggressive like streak that Bmas brings. In some games, like maybe like JDC, I think has been the surprise package where a lot of people like just innately don't like JDC because he replaced NBK, which I think is quite unfair on him. I think if he if he hadn't replace MBK in such an unpopular move. I think people would like give this guy a lot more credit. He's he's pretty solid at what he does. And he actually has carry potential. Like we've seen him carry games. That's you know, that's something that I think MBK did actually do once on mouse, so I, I shouldn't say he couldn't do it. But you know, that's that's if if JDC can carry games, that's a new like look for mouse. And that they actually do have a toolbox. They have players to carry in different if you have four people who can actually carry a game. You can kind of win any game. Yeah. You can also lose any game, but that's mouse sports. Like, that's what mouse sports have always been. Yeah. Um, I don't really want to talk talk about Navi that much. They they went to they they, they won every map. They they looked like Navi. Electronic looks yeah. like he is the IGL that everyone hoped he would be. Uh, Some die young looks fantastic. They should continue with this roster forever. Uh, is there is there more we need to say on this? They, they young right. just seems like the perfect stand-in because he just seems like the sort of player who will just do any job he has to do. Like you just say to him, you know, when you're playing with randoms and there's always a guy like me mid, I'm all ping. Like, okay, fine, whatever. And then there's always one guy who's like, I'll just play wherever somebody else isn't playing, and then he's just like locked down. He like this is my guy. He will fill in anywhere. And he will just do his job. He'll get his 20 kills. He'll get his multi kills when he needs them. He'll go one for one when he needs to. He'll bait for you if he has to. He's just a really nice stand in to have. Like he doesn't he doesn't have a big noticeable flaw in his game. Yeah. Um, and the other team we'll talk about uh, quickly is Movistar Riders, who went through one through everything through the upper fight and Dragonite. Hit one, oh, took team. one map off Navi in the upper finals. They also just came off in uh, what is it? ESL, ESL Valencia. ESL Valencia win. Um, they, I think they, they were some people of Valencia. Oh no! Like, oh yeah! No, they they crushed in Valencia. I, I think that was a really good warm up for them coming into Cologne. I think it's obviously showing that's paying off. Um, oh, group right. B, real quick. Um, yeah, th- this group was supposed this to be, be a quick episode, and it's already long. I know this was supposed to be the easy group, right? Uh, your, your best teams here were Phase, who let's be real, very good team. Yep. Um, but Fair after much. phase, you have the likes of Spirit, Cloud9, uh, Furia, Outsiders, Astralis, Double Nation, Liquid, right? This is supposed to be the easier group. This was not the easier group. <laughs> I mean, um, a Liquid got through, so it must have been pretty easy. That's, that's I wanted to, we have to talk more about Liquid because there's other pieces to this. Um, phase 2 out everyone. They didn't lose a map. Their phase, yeah. I. Whatever they, they we talked like about, like of the oh, Antwerp major. Yeah, as I say, the, whatever event that they just played in, that we we're like, ah, oh, maybe phase isn't it all that they were. No, lie, they're fantastic. Uh, Double Nation looks great through play-ins. Struggled in the group. They faced phase. They faced liquid. Unfortunate people that they played against. Um, especially like like phase. Everyone's losing two o two, but liquid they. It's an unfortunate pull because Liquid looked like a different beast yep. um, once they hit that. We'll talk about them more in a, a minute or two. Uh, Spirit looked okay. Um, Spirit expectations are all over the place right now yeah. because they are new players all over the place. They've just run wonderful. I'm wonderful Congratulations. Like a little bit of time to uh, get used to this level of play, which is to be expected. The kid's like fucking 17. He's never played a big land before. I was a little bit disappointed because they look so hot coming in. Um, Patsy just looks like fucking ridiculous. Like Patsy's so good. 
I, I don't know what like I was cursing Patsy's name. I was watching like his yeah. game. He's so good. Like he just he 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 is just like the Yakinda regen. Like he's just another Yakinda. He's absurdly aggressive, but he just never seems to lose a fight. Like he just instant headshot at any angle you want. Like his cross head placement is flawless. So good. Um Cloud Nine. They looked yeah. okay-ish, not really, but yeah, they, look, they didn't look good. I, again, I think the player break will do them some good. Like this has been a long. It's it feels like it's been ages since we've had a proper break, and I think yeah, a we, lot of teams are burnt out. We both thought it was like a month ago. We thought it was before Cologne. Yeah, <laughs> like, it, like like it should have been like after yeah. the, like after the major. It's kind of all a bit. Uh, maybe we're just giving them too much credit. Like maybe. They just they just didn't look good. Like I mean, Nafani just had like probably the worst event of his career. Um, that Nafani's event was terrible because also when you're, I feel like when the IGL is playing that badly, it can impact their calling as well. Like you look, you see how much different heroic look when Cadian's fragging because he just sort of he believes in every call. He's just like in the zone. He's calling. He knows what's happening. When you're playing badly and you're trying to like outthink the opponent as well, it's just gonna. Compound it, you're going to start doubting yourself. Like, ah, oh, lads, I'm having a horrible game. I can't read. Uh, I don't know what's going on. So you just have to. I think that doesn't help. That doesn't help at all. And I think maybe we'll come back after the player break and they look better. They they seem pretty up and down, but that's to be expected of such a young team. I think. Yeah, uh, outsiders. I'm going to refer you back to our Ents argument. Um, I mean, uh, outside to, to, to a degree. They've also made changes, so I. Outsiders just lost their best player and one of the best players in the world and replaced him with two players from K23. Like, it's going to take some time. Like, they, they completely, like, rejigged their roles. I think Kikert's taken a lot of your Kindar roles on the T side. I don't know what just happened in the kitchen. Um, Kikert's taken a lot of his roles on the T side. Um, Norbert, I think, has taken some of them. But like it's going to take a little bit of time for those two to get adjusted. They have firepower. They have a lot of firepower. Yeah. Um, whether or not this team's going to be as good as the old version, I doubt. Because the old version was so reliant on your Kindar, where Kika is a good player. I think he's quite underrated mechanically, but he's not your Kinder. The very, the very few people are. Like, as if you put Patsy in this team, it might be like top four top five potential because that he would just be your, your kinder replacement. Yeah, yeah. But there's no way Spirit are going to sell him. So, All right. Uh, Furia, they looked... I, I, I have such complicated feelings about Furia because they looked lost and then they looked like they found themselves and then they looked lost again. I, I, think, the, I think Furia falls under the player break. So and what I'd like to say about Furia is that after they bombed out of ESL Challenge of Valencia, Art gave an interview where he said, and I'm, I'm like, I'm not, uh, this isn't verbatim because I can't remember the exact words, but he said something along the lines of, we didn't play like favorites, we weren't aggressive enough. So that tells you everything yeah. you need to know about the way Art <laughs> thinks about Counter-Strike. <laughs> he thinks he wasn't aggressive enough. So, yeah, you know, what can you do? Yeah. Um, Fury is just in a weird place. I don't know if there's anything. It's not like they can change a player. They're... I think you just sort of shrug your shoulders. If somebody great comes up and you can maybe re- replace drop, like maybe you try it. But but that's it. Like yeah, like I, you're I don't not going to think... replace anyone of the core. Safe is the best opera in Brazil right now. As much um, as I love Art, this team lives and dies by him, and he has not been in good form. So uh, Malus doesn't speak Portuguese, does he? Yes, he does. Ah, oh. But the, the point is, you can't put Malv and Art on the same team. It's just, you're going to well, have to say they weren't the aggressive enough. Nation. Yeah, true. <laughs> <laughs> to put Malv's in, you'd have to like replace Drop, who does not play anywhere near similar roles. Like That's what I'm saying. They, they said they weren't aggressive if, enough. If you want the most like uber aggressive player, one of, the, one of the most aggressive players I've ever seen, Brazilian guys go called RCF. He's an orper, but he has like no regard for his own life. He's the complete opposite of Jane. He has no regard for his own life. He would just like jump through a smoke and try and quick scope something. He's not even very good. I just love him because he's uber aggressive for no reason. All right. So we said before how phase two of everyone through. These are the last two teams now that made it through the entire uh, 
group, and they are the two teams you would not have expected if you looked at this, which is Liquid and Astralis. Uh, let's talk about Astralis first. Uh, the Spearmen are back. I'm pretty sure this is just Jason Lake's team. Somebody tell me I'm wrong. <laughs> Wait, what? The sp- this Wait. is the Blame F and Config show. Oh, sorry. Yes. Sorry. It got you. All right. I, I was like, did I miss something? Jason Lake? He bought Astralis? Okay, that makes no, sense. Th- this um, is- yeah. Blame F will always just fucking flat track bully half cut teams. Like teams who aren't quite at the level, Blame F will just pummel them into the ground. Like, Donkey Kong down B style, like bang, bang, bang. He will just pummel you into the ground. You won't move. Against good teams, he's not able to do that. Astralis won't look as good. They, but it's at least reassuring to see them beat teams worse than them if you're an Astralis fan. Yeah. Um, something to note about Astralis is it came out in an interview this week is that Blame is starting to call at least on Mirage T side. Yeah, he may also be calling on other maps that we don't know about. But I would imagine he might on Vertigo. He was always very good at Vertigo. They may start moving some of the IGL responsibilities from Glaive towards Blame, which a lot of us thought was going to happen inevitably anyway. Yeah, so... I don't really like it, but I think it's I think it has to happen. How can you be like the goat IGL and have like IGLing taken off you? <laughs> yeah, you would like you wouldn't see. You know, you wouldn't see a running back take the ball off Tom Brady, would you? Like, move over, Tom. I'm going to throw this. You yeah. just wouldn't see it. No, nobody's taken the uh, the buzzer beater shot off Larry Bird. Like, it's not happening. Let's talk about Liquid. Um, so I was I watched the Liquid Spirit game live. I, I live matches are rough for me most of the time, but Liquid Spirit I was able to watch live. And I did not watch it. I didn't watch it by myself. I actually was part of the Dust 2 watch party for that game. Cool. Um, so I so I had the pleasure of having Ryan go from 100 to 0 every 30 seconds during that game. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think even though you're a Liquid fan, it's probably like almost like nice to see Liquid lose just to hear Ryan. Yeah. Yeah. It um, certainly softens the blow. Yeah, so the 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 ancient on the Liquid Spirit game was rough. That was yeah, unfortunate. That, that was the point where I thought Spirit were going to go through. <laughs> yeah. That, that was the point where you thought Spirit was going to go through. They they won the game. They barely, right? Yakindar played okay in the first map. Played actually really well in the first map, and then as it went on, did not play as well. But Yakindar is actually not the number one person I want to talk about. Elise? Uh, Elise is having the tournament of his, like the best tournament of his career right now. Nitro looks like he's played Counter Strike recently. Mm. Mm. Uh, so yeah, on some maps, it's not every map. Pretty dodgy maps. What I will say, uh, um, having your Kindar in there has allowed Elise a little bit more space in the sort of like early mid round, where yeah, so they would be more aggressive normally. But you just leave all of that to your Kindar, and even if he's playing badly, you see the effect it has. Like when Elise is no longer dying for somebody else he looks like a hell of a player and i mean yeah, so th- always known this it's it's whether or not this liquid keeps up the momentum the atmosphere which typically liquid teams have struggled with so from everything i've seen is that the conversation was is that uh elise used to be your entry Yes, but before he was your entry, he was the second man in. Yes, he was your he was your trade player. He was your cleanup. But when the team got rid of Twists, I'm sorry, when Twists left the team, um, Elise took up the responsibilities of the entry. Yep, and then it, it went into the kind of down spiral. But we yep. see Elise going back to his normal role now because yep. we have someone that's more aggressive than Elise. You know, the most aggressive player in the world, and. It works. Yeah. And so he he just looks instantly better. Like the whole team. This is what I say when people like talk about Yukindar and it's like, he actually just is a top five player in the world. I don't care what anyone's like. He doesn't, he doesn't even have to frag to have an impact. Like the amount of space he has. The difference between liquid with and without Yukindar is absurd. I mean, there there is some help. Like they've played, they've all played like over 150 hours in the past two weeks. That will fucking help. But like just, Having a player who is completely fearless 
but will also at times just win games on his like he he will just win laps on his own sometimes like there's, there's no qualms about that like he will just sometimes just run into a bomb site take out two players and you just win like and he, he'll have maps where he is unstoppable but even when he isn't he still has impact because he he does his job well like even when he's dead he's doing his job properly like yeah um so the next game they played after losing to Spirit was the longest match in all of Cologne for this year, which was the Double O Nation game. Yeah. Which the first map was three OTs and the second map was two. Or there was five overtimes across this entire series. The series was almost five hours. Yeah. It was a banger of a series if you haven't watched it. <laughs> yeah, I mean it. It was fine. It, I thought the Spirit game was a better quality. I thought that. I thought game? Spirit was a better quality too, but it, honestly, choose any game and it's an Elysian Masterclass. Yeah. Um, he just looks like such a different player immediately as soon as you can come in. Um, game against Cloud9, I can't speak to a huge amount because it was at 5 a.m. Eastern time. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I think they just steamrolled Cloud9. Cloud9 they they did. I, I think Naphne was still having this terrible event, right? Kindar played really, really well. It's a team he knows how to play against um, yeah. as he's done often. Um, and then the game against Furia, they just they they won and it was fantastic to see. Yep. Um, the other name, the only name, one of the two only names we haven't talked about. Naf is Naf, but and he's always going to be your consistent player. I want to talk about OC because very good. We have said for a while he's very good. He showed this event that he's yeah, a star. He, off he's a really point. good player. He doesn't need to be a star on this team. I, when he came in, I thought he was going to be the player built around, and I think in that shocks roster he should have been. In this roster, he shouldn't be. He he is doing a fine job in the sort of Hades safe like mod like uh, molds. Like he he takes up safer positions, and he just gets the frags he should. He he like will throw the flashes he needs to do. Like, but he 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 can go aggressive. But it's very rare you actually find an orper who can do both. And I think um, OC will be a little bit underrated by the general public because. People don't realize how difficult it is to do to have like to be able to do two different roles as an orper. Like we've seen like Acor go from an aggressive orper on Mad Lions where he looked really good. It's like a more passive one on Mouse. He looked horrible at it. Like he just didn't look good. Um, like North tried to do it with Mert, didn't look good. Uh, uh, Henny is another one who actually did do it pretty well. Surprisingly, I thought he would struggle. He was excellent on Furia. Um, but like Fallen, when he doesn't play aggressive, just does not look like the same player. OC looks like a really good player going forwards or backwards as an orca, which is really hard to do. Yeah, um, that's that's what I want to talk about uh, liquid wise. Uh, so quickly looking into playoffs, we'll have a show for you on Thursday um, when playoffs are done, obviously. Um, but we've got Mouse against Astralis. Uh, that's tomorrow. kind of a low key banger. I don't know. Who's yeah, win that. I. I I think Astralis, but it could be Mouse, and I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, if Mouse won two zero, I'd be like, yeah, obviously. If Astralis won two zero, I'd be like, yeah, obviously. Um, the other match, which I actually think is to be really good too, I think actually every match in the playoffs is good. Yeah, uh, is Liquid Movistar. I I I really want Movistar to win, but I think I think the story ends here. So here's 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 the here's the the background subplot line that i've got going if astralis beats mouse yeah and liquid beat movistar no right? it's not an astralis liquid final it's not it's a phase navi final the quarter final is just like who gets to lose to phase and navi in the semi-finals let's not kid ourselves like, like yeah if, like if I let you go on this tangent we're gonna get like really <laughs> excited about it it's not gonna happen let's just Nip it in the bud here, and just, <laughs> anything that isn't phase Navi final, we're just gonna like be happily, we're just gonna be pleasantly surprised. We're just gonna be pleasantly gonna, surprised. Okay, we're not even okay, gonna, we're gonna talk about the possibility of Liquid being in the final or Movi Star Riders winning the thing. Like, it's not gonna happen. It's not. Let's not get too ahead of ourselves. <laughs> all right. All right. Well. In the interest of not getting too ahead of ourselves, um, that's it for the episode today. Make sure to follow us on Twitter at Logan Roundup, at TLDR, and at AZ Esk. Uh, we'll be back again Thursday with the rest of the playoffs. Gang, gang.